All right, today we are going to talk about graphing sine and cosine. All right, so we're going to talk about the sine function today. Your sine function is a wave, okay? And for sine x, it starts, well, it doesn't start, it continues in both directions forever and ever, but we like to, the way I always recognize sine is unless you do a phase shift or vertical shift, sine always passes through the origin. And then it finishes at 2 pi. So if you cut that in force, this would be pi over 4. This would be 2 pi over, I mean pi over 2. This would be 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and this would be 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. And what you do is, when you have sine x, you have what we call an amplitude right here, which tells you how high it goes. If nothing's there, then for mother sine, a is 1. So the next mark at pi over 2 goes up to the amplitude. Then at the next mark, it's back at 0. At the next mark, you go down to its amplitude, which is negative 1, and then back to 0. And it just keeps following that pattern. But that's what we call the sine wave. And right there in red would be one period of sine, one cycle, one period. Okay, so some things you should know about the graph of sine x. The domain is negative infinity to infinity because it goes forever and ever in both directions. The range is negative 1 to positive 1. Unless you do a phase shift or a vertical shift or you change your amplitude, okay, your range will always go between your upper amplitude and your lower amplitude. So for mother sign, that's between negative 1 and 1. The period is 2 pi, and that means that the graph pattern repeats itself every 2 pi's, and it's an odd function. All right, so amplitudes and periods. When you have an equation, y equals a sine bx, your amplitude is the absolute value of a, and your period is 2 pi divided by b, whatever's touching x. Okay? So, how to graph sine functions of, the, of this form, where there's no horizontal or vertical shift, okay? If there's no horizontal or vertical shift, you want to find the amplitude, which is the absolute value of whatever number is in touching sine, Find the period, take 2 pi and divide it by b, and then find your scale, which is whatever your period comes out to be cut in fourths. Okay, so then you're going to draw your graph, and you're going to mark the, the x-axis with four marks, which is going to be by your scale. It would be period over 4, 2 period over 4, 3 period over 4, 4 period over 4. Uh, yeah, all right, and then you mark your y-axis according to the amplitude at positive a and negative a. And then you mark your points. Sine starts at 0, 0 unless there's a vertical shift. And then your marks go amplitude, 0, down amplitude, 0, connect, and you've got your sine curve. Okay? So here we go. It says determine the amplitude of each function, then graph the function, and y equals sine x in the same rectangular coordinate system. So we want... Uh, to graph y, well, they want me to graph sine first. Sine oscillates between positive 1 and negative 1, and sine goes 0, up amplitude, 0, down amplitude, 0. That would be sine. Yeah? To do this one, all right, we're going to get our amplitude which is going to be the absolute value of one-third, which is one-third, which means it's only going to go as high as... I don't want to use blue. I'm going to use purple. Okay, it's only going to go as high as one-third, and it's going to go as low as negative one-third. My period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1, because if nothing's touching x, it's a 1, which is 2 pi. My scale is going to be my period, which is 2 pi divided by 4, which reduces down to pi over 2. So this mark becomes pi over 2, this becomes 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 4 pi over 2. And so now when we graph, all we do is we start at 0 still, but now we're only going to go as high as 1 third, then down to 0, then down to a third, and then back to 0 you can see that it's a vertical shrink. Okay, that's going to be a vertical shrink, and it shrunk. Okay, so if we do this one, 
All right, if we graph sine, here's 1, here's negative 1. Start at 0, up amplitude 0, down amplitude 0. There's mother sign. Okay, my amplitude is going to be the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3, which means I have to go as high as 3 and as low as negative 3 for my graph. Okay, we got to get our period, so we're going to take 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. Cut that in fourths, that's pi over 2. So my beginning mark is pi over 2, add a pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, plus a pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2, plus pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2, which you can see is 2 pi, which is when it should end. And then you just go, sine starts at 0. Now normally you would go to up amplitude, but this negative is going to reflect it over x. So your next mark, instead of being at positive 3, is going to be at negative 3 then my zero, then up to positive three, then back to zero. There's my graph. You can see it's a vertical stretch. It's much taller than mother, and it reflected over the x-axis. Okay? So let's try this one. Our period's going to be different. Okay, so here we have an amplitude, it, and it doesn't say I have to graph mother first, and that's because the period's going to be different. It's going to make it look awkward. All right, so we want the absolute value of A, which is going to be 3. So my amplitude is 3, lower, negative 3. My period is going to be 2 pi over B, which is 2 pi over 1 third. P, change, flip. That's going to be 2 pi times 3 over 1, which is 6 pi. Get my scale, I'm going to take 6 pi and divide it by 4, which if I reduce gives me 3 pi over 2. So my first mark is going to be 3 pi over 2. If you add that to itself, you get 6 pi over 2, plus another 3 pi over 2 is 9 pi over 2, and 12 pi over 2. Notice again, this is 6 pi, which is when the period ends, so I did it right. All right, and then after that, you just do your sign. So I start at 0, 0. Then my next mark is going to be up amplitude, so I'm not reflecting. 0, down amplitude, 0. And you can see, I mean, I keep my, my marks, but here, right here, is 3 pi. Normally, the whole function of sine is done by 2 pi. So this would be mother somewhere like this. See how stretched out this is? Okay, this would be mother somewhere around in here. And this is really stretched out horizontally, and it's stretched out vertically. Okay? All right, if we look at this one, all right, I'm going to have my amplitude is the absolute value of negative 3, which means my amplitude is 3. My period is going to be 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi, so my period is going to be 1. My scale is going to be my period cut in fourths, so my scale is 1 fourth, so this is 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, which is 1. Okay, which is when I'm supposed to get done. So now to graph that, I'm going to start at 0, 0. But and because of the negative, normally I would go up to my amplitude, but the negative is going to reflect. So I'm going to go down, then 0, then up, then down. And there's my function. It's vertically stretched. It's reflected over x. And this will be a shrink because 2 pi is bigger than 1. Okay. All right, so now what if you do have horizontal or vertical shifts? In other words, what if you have something added or subtracted inside and you have something added or subtracted on the outside? It's going to be the same thing. You still find your amplitude, you still find your period, you still find your scale, but now you have to find a phase shift and a vertical shift. To find your phase shift, you take whatever C is and divide it by B. That will be your phase shift. Remember to change the sign of C. All right? And that's what that's going to do is that's going to shift you right or left. I, I didn't draw it if it shifted it left, but if it would shift it right, okay, instead of sign starting at 0, 0, it's going to be at 0, 1 mark over. And that 1 mark, you're going to start your scale at the phase shift, which would be at C over B. Okay, so if I do that, all right, um, 
then what you do is your mark one would be here then your next mark and you get your next mark by adding another scale to it all right then you would go up amplitude zero down amplitude zero it's just going to shift it over and then obviously if you've got a vertical shift that's going to make it higher or lower than your amplitude so to figure out that's why i've got these to figure out your new one whatever your amplitude is you'd add or subtract your d2 to figure out how much higher you go and same with if it's at zero you would add or subtract your d to it all right so we have determined the amplitude period scale and phase shift then graph one period of the function all right so my amplitude is going to be the absolute value of one half so it's one half <clears throat> and i don't have any i don't have any vertical shift so it's going to be up here at one half and down here at negative one half my period is going to be two pi over b which in this case is going to be two pi my scale is going to be 2 pi cut in fourths, which is pi over 2. So this mark is pi, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. And then I've got to get my phase shift. My phase shift is going to be C, which is pi over 2, divided by negative, because it's positive there, so it's going to be negative, divided by B, which is 1. So my phase shift is negative pi over 2. My vertical shift is nothing. So what I have to do then is my first mark is going to be over here at negative pi over 2. Oh, I should, actually shouldn't have done that yet. You can't do that yet without your scale. So once I figure out my scale, this is negative 1 half. My first mark has to be at negative pi over 2. And then to get my next marks, I add pi over 2. Well, negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2 would be 0. Plus pi over 2 would be pi over 2. Plus pi over 2 would be 2 pi over 2. Plus pi over 2 would be 3 pi over 2. You need a total of 5 marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's as far as I'm going to need to go to complete my one period of this. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to start now. And this will be my new 0, 0. And then I'm going to go up amplitude. 0, down amplitude zero and there's one period of five. Yeah? I mean one period of five. One period of this function. Yeah. Alright, so now let's try another one. We are going to have the amplitude is the absolute value of negative two, which is two. I don't have a vertical shift, so that's gonna be as high and as low as it goes. Okay, my period is going to be 2 pi over 2, which is pi. And my scale is going to be pi divided by 4. So, to get my phase shift, I'm going to take my C, which is pi over 2, divided by B, which is 2. Heat, change, flip. I get pi over 2 times 1 over 2, which gives me pi over 4. So I'm counting by my first mark is going to be at, oops, that's negative, so that's negative. My first mark is going to be at negative pi over 4, and I'm counting by pi over 4s. So the next one would get me 0, this would get me pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 marks is all I need. So now since we shifted, this becomes my new 0, 0. We're reflecting over x, so my next mark is down amplitude, 0, up amplitude, 0. And there is my graph, shifted to the left, pi over 4 units. Okay? All right, let's look at one where that scale doesn't come out so pretty. All right, we have the absolute value of 3 would be 3. I don't have any vertical shift, so it's going to be as high as 3 and as low as negative 3. It's range. All right, I want to find the period, so that's going to be 2 pi over b, which is pi, so my period's going to be 2. I'm going to find my scale, which will be 2 divided by 4, which is 1 half. And now i got to find my phase shift. My phase shift is going to be c, which is negative 2, over b, which is pi. All right, so I'm going to start at negative 2 over pi. Where in the heck is that? Those are not like my nice little pi over 4s or pi over 2s. Well, we're going to go decimal, okay? This first ordered pair would be 
negative 2 pi com negative 2 pi geez, negative 2 over pi to 0 but I don't know what that is well I typed it in a calculator and I got negative 0.64 comma 0 to get my next ordered pair I'm going to take this and I'm going to add my scale to it so I'd have negative 2 over pi plus 1 half comma my amplitude which is going to be 3 Again, if I type that in the calculator, I get negative 0.14 comma 3. My next ordered pair is going to be negative 2 over pi plus 2 halves, right, because I'd add another half. So I'm going to add a half plus a half, and that will be at comma 0. This is 0.36 comma 0. Okay, my next ordered pair is going to be negative 2 over pi plus a half plus a half plus a half comma negative three my down amplitude and I typed all that in and I got 0.86 comma negative three and then I'm gonna have my last one which is negative two over pi plus four halves that's plus two comma zero and that gives me 1.36 comma zero so if I just mark my scale and I'm going to go negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. To graph this ordered pair, I'm going to start at negative 0 0.640, which is about right there. Then I'm going to go to negative 0.143, which is about right there. Then I'm going to go to 0 0.360, which is about right there. And then I'm going to go to 0 0.86, negative 3, which is about right there. And then I'm going to go to 1.360. So if I connect those, where did my thing go? And 0 0.4, 0 0.36, 0 0.86, oh, sorry. Where's my top one? Negative 1.43. Sorry, it's right there. My point got away. So I'm going to come up. Boop. Good. There we go. Okay. Alright, so if we try one more, that's not so pretty. My amplitude is going to be the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. I don't have any adding D on the end, so it's not going to be higher or lower than positive 2 and negative 2. Alright, and then... Let's see, my period is going to be 2 pi over 2 pi, which is 1. My scale is going to be 1 divided by 4, which is a fourth. And my phase shift is going to be 4 pi divided by 2, negative 4 pi divided by 2 pi, which is going to be negative 2. Right? So, oh, I messed that up on mine. Ooh. So I got negative 2, which that's going to be my new starting point. So at, this is going to be negative 2. To get my scale, all right, I'm going to take negative 2 plus 1 fourth. And that would be at comma, uh, my first one is going to be at negative 2, 0. My next one's going to be at negative 2 plus 1 fourth, comma 2. Um, next one is going to be negative 2 plus 2 fourths, comma 0. My fourth one's going to be negative 2 plus 3 fourths, comma negative 2. And my last one's going to be negative 2 plus 4 fourths, comma 0. So I've got this one. If I type in negative 2 plus 1 fourth, I get negative 1.75, comma 2. If I type this one, negative 2 plus 2 fourths, I get negative 1.5, comma 0, negative 2 plus 3 fourths, I get negative 1.25, comma negative 2, and negative 2 
plus four fourths is negative one comma zero. So I'm going to have, let's see, negative two zero, negative one point seven five two, negative one point five zero, negative one point two five, negative two, and at negative one is zero. So this is really shrunk. That's what it would be. Alright, so how do you use trig values on the unit circle to sketch a graph of each trigonometric function? Yeah, I meant to change that one. We're not working on the unit circle. I'm not sure what the heck they meant by this question since we're not using unit. Well, I mean, I guess we were using like the pi over 2s and the pi over 4s as far as shifting goes, but I'm not really sure what they mean by that. All right, two, how do you find the period? Well, your period is two pi over b. Your midline is basically at zero. I mean, it's going to be your amplitudes added together divided by two, which is usually, unless you have a phase shift up or a vertical shift up or down, your midline is at zero. Um, your phase shift is c over b. Your vertical shift is D. Alright, and it says how do you graph the sine function? Well, if it's just sine, you start at 0, 0, and then you go to pi over 2, 1, and then you go back to the next one would be pi, 2 pi over 2, 0. The next one would be 3 pi over 2, negative 1, and then 4 pi over 2, 0, and you connect them. And it says, given the graph of the trigonometric function, how do you determine the amplitude period in the mid midline of the cosine? Um, we have to do that tomorrow. I don't know why I start that. You know, we're not talking about cosine yet. All right, so we are at homework, which means we are done. So happy homeworking, and I will see you next.